If you would be, please be seated. We are just really glad that you're here. As a part of this service here today at Fellowship, very special. As you can see, we're having baptisms today. This is just a wonderful gathering here together uh, for the glory of God. I wanted to make you aware, uh, uh, briefly just take a moment, uh, that the uh, elders have called for a congregational meeting, a special meeting for uh, July 28th at 7 p.m. So uh, we invite any of you to, uh, to attend that meeting. And especially if this is your church home and if you're a member, uh, the, the elders would like to present some uh, direction for uh, the parking lot expansion. And, uh, and there's a um, we're reaching a point where we need the congregation to make a decision uh, together about that. And so uh, you're invited to be there. Um, it's one of, those, one of those good problems, right? We're trying to discern uh, God's lead in, uh, in expanding our parking lot. Uh, so we invite you to uh, make that uh, on your calendar to be there for that congregational meeting. Thank you. Well, welcome everyone this morning on this special uh, Baptism Sunday. We are so glad that you are here. My name is Brianna. I'm the Director of First Impressions here at Fellowship Church. And uh, if any of you are a guest for the first time, we'd love to you to stop back and see uh, Caitlin and Ben. They have a special gift for you uh, to be able to welcome you here. I know we have a lot of people who may be here as guests uh, for Baptism Sunday, and maybe you don't even know what you're in for uh, here today, but I think that the Lord um, will bless you and that you will be glad that you're here. So we're just glad that you're here even if it's just to show love and support uh, for people who asked you to come to something that you're not even really sure what you came to. <laughs> um, so we do still have time to be able to sign up uh, for the church picnic happening two weeks from now. So next Sunday is the last time, uh, last uh, day to be able to sign up for that. There's a table in the back or uh, you can scan the QR code and sign up online as well. So it's really going to be a great time of uh, hanging out together and fellowship, some fun things like fellowship trivia and uh, ice cream trucks and catered food and live music. So, you know, we're really looking forward um, to having that time together. 
uh, as a church family. And then lastly, um, we are, like uh, Pastor Carl was saying, having some exciting things um, going on uh, to be able to make room for people. You know, as, as Pastor Mark has sometimes said, we've uh, made room for you, but maybe not for your car. So that's why it's going to be important to go to the congregational meeting so we can fix that. But also, uh, Demo Day uh, is coming up uh, for the house next door. So in charge of that is Sam Payne, I'm told is how you pronounce his last name. Yeah, so if you want to give everyone a wave, that's him, that's the guy in charge, yeah. <laughs> So you will not need any construction um, uh, background or anything like that to be able to, to come. Just bring your own, I guess, I don't know, hard hat or gloves or whatever it is that you need for something like that and see uh, Sam and he'll be in charge of that tomorrow and Tuesday um, from 9 to 5. So we're definitely uh, looking for some help for that. And now um, let's turn it over to the baptisms. Thank you, uh, Brianna. She does such a wonderful job, doesn't she? Thank you. We, uh, we have the, uh, the privilege this morning of uh, actually starting our worship service in a little bit of a different way. Uh, we haven't started our worship services with baptisms uh, before, but we're excited to do that today. And I just want you to know, maybe you're newer to the church, or maybe this is your first time here, uh, Fellowship Church practices uh, believer's baptism. And what that means is uh, we ask people who have placed their faith and their trust in Jesus Christ, who've made that profession of faith, We've asked for them to then take the next step of obedience, uh, which the Lord Jesus Christ has set the example for us to do, and that is to, to follow the Lord Jesus in baptism. And, and in baptism, you're symbolizing what it is that Christ has already done for you. So this act today uh, is not an action uh, that is in any way providing salvation for anyone. Um, it is simply a symbol of the fact that they have already found their salvation in Jesus Christ, and they have done that through faith in him and trust in what it is that he has done for them. So we've had the opportunity to hear testimonies from each of the candidates. You'll hear a little bit of their testimony. We hear a whole lot more, uh, but for time's sake, we're not able to share all of it, but they have shared their testimony with us, made a profession of faith, and they now would like to publicly come before you and, and the Lord God, and, uh, and follow the Lord in baptism. And so you'll, you'll have the opportunity to hear a little bit of a testimony before the candidate comes, and we'll start with our, with our first one right now. And I'm going into the ninth grade this year. Um, when I was younger, I kind of switched from home to home because of my biological parents not being able to um, care for me at the time. And um, when I was around four or five-ish, I went to go live with my grandpa. And I still live with him to this day, so that's really great. Um, when I was living with him, we kind of went to church every once in a while, by what I can remember. Um, but as soon as my um, adoptive mother came in, that was when time really started to crack down on the whole church thing. <laughs> um, we kind of went from church to church. We didn't really stay in one place, so it was hard to develop that church family. But as soon as we moved here, um, we just stayed here. There was no changing from a different church, so I felt like I really belonged here. Um, that At that moment was when I started to believe that my faith was my own because um, I was not only listening more to the sermons here, because I found them actually kind of interesting, <laughs> um, but I started going to youth group here, and I, I had never done that before. I think having my own faith really helped me get through the whole being the new kid at school, but when I professed my faith in Christ was when I went to student life camp. It was um, a completely different experience. I had always believed that Jesus was my savior and I knew who he was, but I didn't understand it completely and I don't think I ever will. But um, I do know that he is my savior and I believe in him. So I'm coming forward to become baptized because I'm not ashamed of following Christ and I want to show people that and that's important to me. Amen. Amen. Luna, have you trusted in Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of your sins? Yes, I have. Then I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death. 
raised to walk in the new world. Hello, uh, my name is Cynthia Jackson. I am mother to three lovely children, Riley, Taylor, and Donnell, and a wife uh, to Donnell Sr. Uh, so I grew up Methodist. Um, there, there was no shortage of uh, belief or uh, love in my household. Um, my mother was very, very involved in the church and likewise my siblings and I kind of rolled with it and I never ever experienced church as a chore. Um, I was baptized as an infant and honestly I, I think I carry that as feeling covered and I got older and I got more caught up in the ways of the world. It was more important to decide what major I was going to study what promotion I could possibly get. So uh, we had two big events, uh, one great loss and one great illness. <laughs> and God led me here to fellowship, uh, to jam, and those amazing mothers who literally laid hands upon me and prayed over my own health and God has been so gracious during this time in my life. Everyone has a turning point um, in which they have to lean on something, someone. And because I was brought up in the church and because I was able to find another church home, I, I didn't have to think twice on falling to my knees and praying to God and, and finding peace. Having my believer's baptism today means that I am more than willing to be a disciple that makes disciples. Uh, that I am setting this example for my family. I am expressing the profound experience of accepting Jesus as my savior. Amen. Amen. Cynthia, have you trusted in Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of your sins? I have. That I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death. Raised to walk. Well, my name is George, and uh I've always believed in God my whole life. Um, I was most of my life Catholic, and um, I would go to church every Sunday, and I felt that going to church on Sunday, doing good things, and, and being a giving person was good enough. I, God provided a wife, two beautiful children, a home for my family to live in, I couldn't have been any happier. And uh, then my life turned a little bit for the worst. Um, my marriage after 19 years ended. Um, I remember praying to God that I wanted to keep my family from splitting up. Uh, I constantly pray. Um, and I would want to fix this so bad. And I just, it just couldn't be fixed. So I took the wrong path. I started going out meeting the wrong women, drinking, got a DUI. Um, it was a mess. It was the biggest mistake of my life. And a few months later, I met a Christian woman. Um, 
she was a born again, which I didn't know what that was at the time, um, but I, we just hit it off. I, we just, it was like we knew each other for years and years, and uh, we'd read the Bible together. Um, and, you know, I remember asking her, what's born again? You know, I was like, you know, I wasn't sure, you know, and, um, and but through reading the Bible and, and seeing each other constantly, I became born again. And um, that's when I realized that going to church on Sundays and doing good, good deeds and, you know, everything that I could possibly do wasn't enough. What was enough was it's God's grace. It's uh, Jesus forgiving me of my sins through the faith of Jesus Christ and through salvation and true salvation. So I would like to live like Jesus. I would like to be baptized like Jesus did. And I would like to announce publicly in front of everyone that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Amen, George. George, have you trusted in Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of your sins? Yes, I have. And I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk. My name is Albert. Uh, I've been attending Fellowship Church for a few months now. Um, I was originally brought up in the church. I went to Mennonite, went to Catholic, um, and I even read the Bible uh, entirely uh, from cover to cover at least once. And I never really took it to heart. Um, I never felt that spiritual connection to it, took what I knew or took what I read and just went on my way. Um, eventually I'd go down the path of towards atheism um, where I wasn't really sure. I didn't really know what to believe. Um, if anything at all. I also investigated other, other religions on, on my own time. Um, I was stationed uh, in the Middle East for, for three years while I was with the Navy. And so I studied Judaism, Islam, Buddhism. You kind of you have to study them uh, if you want to be an, an argumentative atheist. After all that, my search for the truth eventually led me to accept Jesus Christ as my salvation. Um, and it was only recently when I confided in my sister about an issue that was really, it really like broke me, like it was breaking me apart and I wasn't sure what to do. Um, I called her and, and she's been recently baptized as well. She prayed for me over the phone and uh, it was at that time I pretty much just, I just broke down um, and felt uh, compelled basically just pleading for forgiveness. And uh, it was not long after that where I just started to feel completely renewed, completely like refreshed. And I, I've since changed my life pretty much like, all around. I'm coming forward to be baptized because I want to, to obey his commandments. Um, and as he's called us to go forth and create disciples, be baptized and create disciples, I would want to be, to be baptized. I would also like to to live by his teachings and to also serve him and glorify his name and whatever he calls me to do. Albert, have you trusted in Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of your sins? Yes, I have. And I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his Son. Hi, I'm Joey Kaniscus. I'm 19. I grew up in a house where we believed in God, but we just thought if you were a good person, you were going to go to heaven. My dad and my mom split up when I was around two years old. Um, my dad's an alcoholic and he's really mentally abusive so I grew up with a lot of stress and anxiety. Um, growing up I started to 
lean away from, you know, believing in God. And by the time I was in high school, I didn't believe it, he was real at all. And I feel like that's when my life really went downhill really fast. Um, I was severely bullied. I didn't have friends and my mental health just kept getting worse and worse and worse. Um, I ended up finding a group of friends and uh, we started experimenting with drugs and that led to you know, a lot more uh, struggles in my life. My mental health got even worse than it already was. Um, I was depressed, suicidal, you know, name it. And it was there, I was in a really bad place. So I reached out to a therapist. Um, they helped for a short time, but after you stop talking to them, it kind of all comes rushing back. I tried Eastern meditation, but that did absolutely nothing at all for me. I also tried um, medication and that just made my mental health even worse. It was terrible. And I was, you know, I felt trapped, like I had nowhere to go. That is when I felt something in my heart just tugging at it. And I opened the door and it was Jesus, and that's when I met him. Jesus picked me up and nurtured me like a baby back to health. Um, I know that this doesn't happen for everyone, but for me, he blessed me and cured my mental illness like that, and I'm so forever grateful. So even though I have struggles, I know that Jesus is faithful, and he's always ready to help me, and he's always there, no matter what. Um, you know, for me, this whole journey, it was, it was hard, but for him, anything is possible but failure. Um, I'm coming forward to be baptized because about a year ago, I got down on my knees, I repented for my sins, and you know, I gave my life to Jesus that night, and it felt amazing. Um, I'm forever grateful for what Jesus did for me, and I owe my life, I owe him everything. Joey, have you trusted in Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of your sins? I have. And I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death. Raised to life in the name of the Father. Hallelujah. Let's thank the Lord again. Lord, he's done. So for just a minute, we're going to, uh, we're going to prepare to continue the rest of the service. Could we just take a moment? Why don't you stand and, uh, and greet those around you, make sure they know they're welcome here and just, uh, welcome them in the name of the Lord.
Amen. Well, the Lord is worthy of praise because he is the God who saves us. We get to respond to what we've witnessed with worship. Praise the Lord who saved us from death. Amen. Let's all stand together. Let's thank him. Yes, Lord God, this praise is yours. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn. the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away.
Lord, you are worthy. Your word describes you exalted on your throne and you're always surrounded by worship and praise because you're always worthy. Lord, our circumstances can be hard, but you are still worthy. So I thank you, Lord, that in this day, in this time, no matter what, we can join in in surrounding your heavenly throne room with the sound of worship and praise because you are worthy right now. Praise unbroken, praise unending, be yours, be yours forevermore. Praise untainted, praise unfair.
this worship that you are surrounded by all the time. You have made a place for us. Yes. We belong there because you have changed us through Christ, through your son, through the salvation that you have provided. You've made it so that we are citizens of heaven, that through your son, we, we belong, our worship, our praise of you that you're worthy of can just be mixed right in, Lord, as the voices from all around this world. Um, Lord, every tribe, tongue, and language like you promised, glorifying Jesus Christ, our Savior. Thank you for that privilege here today. Continue to teach us and lead us as we submit our lives to you and follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, thank you. You may be seated. And uh, this time we're going to dismiss our, our kids to kids church uh, at the same time. So we're, we're glad they could be here um, as part of our service and sing along with us. Amen. I, if I haven't met you before, by the way, my name is Carl Durley. I'm one of the pastors here. I would love to uh, just have a chance to meet you after the service. There's a lot of people who, who I know that's the case. They'd love to meet you. you know, we, have, we have our guest services desk, but uh, um, if you're a guest here, uh, I just want to extend that personal invitation. Love to uh, connect with you after the service. Our ushers are coming forward now to pass out our fellowship pads, and they will uh, be passing them down the aisles. If, if you would just sign those and, and pass them down, we appreciate you taking a moment to do that. You can put whatever information uh, you'd like us to have. We won't give your information away to anybody else. We just would love to um, reach out to you and thank you for being here as a part of, our, uh, of this worship service here today. Uh, we hope you're blessed by it. Um, also, as a reminder that God's people have always worshiped God through giving. And for those who call Fellowship Church home, um, we want to continue to submit ourselves to God in worship in every aspect of our lives. That includes our finances, how we spend our time, the, th the things that we think about. Uh, we, we believe that, that our lives belong to him. And as Romans 12 says, we want to offer our lives as a living sacrifice to God and giving is a part of this, this living sacrifice that we offer for his praise in response to his mercy and grace and salvation for us. Uh, so I'd like to take a moment and just lead us in a prayer together that God would lead us as a church um, before we move into the, the preaching of, of God's word in this uh, special sermon series that we have. So uh, would you join me in prayer as we, uh, as we go to the Lord? Lord God, again, we we have submitted ourselves to you in, in song and in prayer. We have celebrated your great work in baptisms. We've declared your, your work in individual lives, transforming lives still to this day. And we know that you continue to be at work. And we as a church, Lord, continuously offer ourselves to you. We pray that we would be a living sacrifice united together in Christ serving you and your purposes in this world, wherever that leads us, um, Lord, whatever, we, we have just yielded ourselves to you. We pray you'd bless us as we pursue the mission that you've given us as a church. And thank you, Lord, for the way that your gospel is going out all around this world. Uh, we pray for, for that. We pray for people to come to Christ. We pray for people to give their lives to Christ and to serve you uh, with joy in any way that you can use us as a church Lord, to, to be a beacon of your gospel, uh, we say amen to that and thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. And I encourage you to listen carefully as, uh, as he shares with us now about this worldview of Islam. And one of the things that we're going to be doing is helping you to distinguish between uh, the biblical understanding, the biblical worldview of Christianity and uh, the worldview uh, religion of Islam. 
And, um, and then after the video, I'll be up um, to do some teaching uh, on it. But let's pray and ask God to lead us as we're about to start uh, and hear uh, from our brother. Lord God, thank you uh, ready for this wonderful service today uh, of singing praise and uh, testifying to the work of Christ through the obedience of baptism. And Lord, now as we move into this portion of the service, I pray that you would use the testimony of our brother in the Lord who is going to be sharing uh, his experience. And may we learn as Christians, may we, be, may we be good students of the word to be able to distinguish um, unbiblical worldviews from biblical worldviews. Um, and, and I pray that uh, as, as our brother shares that uh, you would give us uh, the wisdom and discernment to learn. And uh, we ask your spirit uh, to do that work. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll watch it now. Starting off, um, what, talk to us just a little bit about um, your uh, particular religious background. What was that like for you uh, growing up? Yeah, so uh, I grew up uh, in an uh, uh, Orthodox uh, family. Uh, Orthodox is uh, very similar to Catholic, uh, nominal Christian. Uh, 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 growing, I believe that salvation is uh, faith uh, plus works. Uh, so uh, uh, I need to maintain um, my salvation. So basically, Jesus come to my heart when I invite him in. Uh, uh, but I need to maintain uh, a clean heart. Uh, for him, uh, for me to continue to have this relationship uh, with Christ, that uh, if I fail to do so and go back uh, to my old habits and sin, uh, my heart is not clean anymore. How can Jesus still be in my heart? So uh, you can uh, see, see that uh, if, if you grow up believing this way and it is a kind of a revolving door, Jesus come in and leave you and come in and leave you. Uh, over time, you, you develop this frustration, and uh, I started to think that maybe this is not uh, for me. So this was a struggle uh, that uh, I had uh, 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 in uh, middle school and early high school uh, about uh, 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 how can I be saved. How, how then did you get um, introduced to uh to islam yeah so uh where i grow up it's uh, islam is all around ar around me uh as i said we're we're a minority and uh, in the middle east religion influence every aspect uh, of life uh so it uh, uh it's uh, dealing with neighbors dealing with my friends at school just watching tv so uh it's everything I do is influenced by those relationships and way of life uh, 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 early on in life. Uh, so uh, when I was in high school, and as I just mentioned, I started to develop this frustration with my own belief mm -hmm. about how can I be saved uh, uh, and uh, attempting many times to invite Jesus to my heart. But then uh, I struggle with uh, 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 that uh, in Orthodox, it's it's not a lasting relationship, and it's up to me to maintain my salvation. It was during that time that I started to explore uh, other religions, and it was a time where I started to read in the Quran. I started to study uh, to, uh, 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 the Quran, and uh, it, the more I studied, uh, uh, the more I was convinced about the truth we have uh in, in in the bible uh uh it was when i started to uh, not find an answers in islam and uh, uh 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 many places in quran it affirms uh christianity uh started to go back and study the bible deeper and it was uh, till then when i you know especially places in john where jesus speak about his sheep is in his hand no one can take them away uh, 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 and other places where Jesus promised uh, that he will never leave and forsake us, uh, that I started to understand it's a lasting relationships and it, uh, 
uh, Jesus guarantee it, and it is not up to me to maintain the salvation, but he promises. This is this was the first uh, I was introduced uh, in a deeper level to the Quran when I was struggling with my own belief and I started to study other uh, religions. Uh, the second time I was uh, uh, exposed in deeper, uh, 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 on a deeper level uh, to the Quran, when I was uh, when I became a Christian last year in high school, I started to hear and learn about that we need to reach out uh, to others and share about uh, uh, Christ. And at first, I started doing this with my nominal Christian friends, uh, and then I started to have vision to reach in uh, uh, Muslims. So uh, I had to go back and study the Quran more. Uh, to learn how can I share the gospel in an effective way, in a way that makes sense uh, to them. So even though you were, even though you were growing up in a area and in a country where um, Islam and Muslims were around you, it was the majority, like you said. Um, and even though you were searching, because it sounds like you were, you still, even as you began to search the Quran, you still you didn't you didn't find it as something that was going to be acceptable to you like it it didn't seem to to fit right that's what you're saying like it just didn't yeah. didn't didn't connect with you um what what were can you think of just some specific reasons why that was the case yeah sure so basically islam uh, claims that it is affirming the injil which is the new testament and the Torah, which is the Old Testament. So, uh, it, uh, uh, it, uh, so it claims that it is affirming those two uh, holy books that was revealed uh, before the Quran, uh, and it, that it is from the same God, and that all prophets believed uh, in Islam. So when uh, I study it, it was uh, clear to me that uh, Islam and Christianity even though they share the belief that there is only one true God who is creator, eternal, all-knowing, and Islam believes the virgin birth of Jesus, uh, that he was sinless, that he will come again. So they share those things, but they are significantly different and contradict each other. Uh, so both cannot be true at the same time. Uh, one of them, is true and, and the other is wrong. So and I, so in my search, it was clear that while you have two those two books, one of them is confirming the other. You know, where uh, many verses, especially early on in Islam, that speaks about the Bible that there is light and guidance in it, or it is asking the Christian to live according to what God revealed in the Bible. Uh, uh, so you have a lot of those early verses that's affirming to the Bible, while the Bible claim that it is the last revelation. Uh, so you have those two books, which is a significantly different. Uh, both cannot be true, true at the same time. You have one claiming to be the last revelation, and the other one is affirming that the books that came earlier is light and guidance and asking the Christians to live according uh, to it. Uh, so this was a significant thing for me to uh, 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 to try to make a, my decision about which one uh, I want to uh, to follow. There are other factors, uh, internal contradictions, like early verses in Islam speaks positively about the Bible, later verses speaks negatively about it, but this is an internal contradiction uh, for them to solve. Uh, other historical evidences uh, uh, were, was also a factor in me not uh, uh, considering it as an option uh, for myself. Uh, uh, also, the Quran speak about God, God is not personal in, uh, in Islam, so you cannot know God personally and have a relationship uh, with him, which is also was a significant a factor for me. Uh, another thing is that uh, uh, there is no assurance of salvation uh, in Islam. Uh, and uh, again, uh, uh, understanding uh, 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 who 
who Jesus is and uh, uh, how unique he is and the promises he gave about guaranteeing our salvation uh, was a fact, another factor in, in me, uh, you know, uh, putting my trust in the Bible. How would you, um, if, if somebody were to ask you or if somebody was just kind of unaware of what uh, Islam really is um, or how, how, like, how would you describe that? Um, I know you're talking about a, a, a religion and a worldview that is very uh, in depth. There's a lot to it, but just um, in a uh, in a more basic level, like how how would you try to explain to somebody what you know what it is if they're trying to understand what it is? Does that make sense? That question. Yeah. yeah. So I would say two main things. You know, Islam means surrender or submission. Uh, so the word Islam means submission. So this is the first thing. It's, it's about, you know, surrendering uh, to God. Uh, uh, the second thing is, is, uh, is sin. Uh, we have uh, 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 two different, totally two different uh, understand, understandings of, uh, of, uh, of sin. Uh, while in the Bible, sin is a big problem. It's uh, the punishment is death. Uh, it separates us from God. It has unlimited consequences. Uh, in Islam, sin is not a big deal. Uh, God created us forgetful. Uh, we only need to be reminded and practice the five pillars uh, of faith. So while we as Christians see that there was a need for a savior, it's either we uh, pay the penalty for sin ourselves or accept Jesus' death on the cross. Uh, to deal with uh, sin and uh, 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 in Islam, sin is not a big deal. Uh, so it's so Islam means surrendering to God. Uh, also, uh, a big factor uh, understanding that Islam, the Muslim mindset is that sin uh, is is not a big deal, and th because of that, they don't see uh, the need for a savior. So you need to surrender to God, and you need to practice what they call the five pillars. Uh, of faith. Uh, you may be familiar with some of, of them. One is the creed, uh, which is uh, uh, that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad uh, is his prophet. So this is the first pillar, the creed. Second is prayer. And prayer is not like our prayer. You, you, you don't just talk with God. It's a prayer that you recite and you pray it five times a day uh, following the sun. So sunrise, you know, noon, uh, uh, and so on. Uh, the third one is charity. It's uh, two and a half percent that you give annually. Uh, the uh, fourth pillar is fasting. Uh, uh, and it is fasting the month uh, of Ramadan. So this one month, uh, fasting from uh, 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 sunrise uh, 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 to sunset. And uh, the fifth and last one uh, is uh, pilgrimage, uh, visiting Mecca uh, uh, after the big festival uh, uh, they have, uh, where they celebrate Abraham uh, offering his son as a sacrifice. So it's surrendering to God. Sin is not a big deal. Uh, practicing the five pillars uh, of faith, but ultimately. Uh, 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 there is no assurance uh, for salvation. One can only hope for God's mercy. Some follow them to a certain degree. Uh, they may not pray all the five prayers, but maybe just two or three uh, a day. Uh, 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 of course, all of them uh, do the creed several times, you know, uh, that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. Uh, fast in Ramadan, especially if you're in the Middle Eastern countries, there is a lot of peer pressure. Restaurants are, are all closed. You cannot eat or drink in front of uh, other people. So even if you don't really want to do it, uh, you have to conform with with uh, with the community. Uh, so yeah, some most people trying uh, trying uh, uh, to follow them uh, to a one point, uh, but again. If there is, if if even if you do all this stuff and you're not sure that you will make it to heaven, and it all based based on God's 
mercy when you stand in front of him uh you can understand that a lot of people do it but there is this sense of frustration you know there is empty emptiness uh that they that they ex experience uh and some things that maybe if i do it more i will feel spiritually connected with god you know or, or experience peace mm -hmm. and you can see how m in many cases people we meet with they try but when they feel that it is not meeting their spiritual needs they not experiencing peace uh, 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 or feeling spiritually connected with god some then kind of give up and stop doing it altogether when in in, in some of the in some of the uh experiences that you've had um when uh, you know talking to people who uh, who are uh muslims and who uh, who believe who believe this way what what would you say just again in your experience is the most appealing aspect um that when people are drawn to uh, to Islam, what seems to be what you're seeing, at least in your experience, that seems to be drawing them to it? For example, uh, there was this uh, 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 sign in, 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 in Toronto outside a mosque, uh, and it was uh, saying, everyone welcome and no one told is a sinner. He's a sinner. Uh, so it, it gave you a glimpse of what... Uh, uh, might be appealing uh, 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 to them in, in Islam. They are not told they are sinners. Uh, 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 you don't sin is 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 not uh, uh, an internal condition. It's an external act. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, so so you don't have this problem to deal with. How 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 how. Uh, how can I uh, 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 address uh, sin? Uh, the fact that uh, they believe that uh, God created them this way uh, and uh, they just need uh, to be reminded uh, uh, and that sin is not a big deal uh, is, a, is a, f a appealing factor. Another factor that's uh, keeping a lot of Muslims uh, 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 is that they don't have a, a chance uh, to uh, be exposed uh, to uh, uh, what true Christianity is. Uh, if you're in a, in a Muslim country, uh, this is the only way of life you're exposed to. Uh, and what they learn about Christianity is what they are told from their religious teachers. Uh, so they don't actually have another option uh, to consider. Uh, because what they uh, been taught about Christianity is not the Christianity you and I know. Uh, uh, to the point that uh, in in many uh, cases uh, uh, they believe that uh, Trinity is actually God, Jesus, and Mary. Mary, you know. So uh, so it, it, some. When Islam started, there was this cult in the Arab Peninsula, Saudi Arabia, these days, uh, that believed that this is the Trinity, God, Jesus, and Mary. Uh, so you can see th their understanding about Christianity is taken from the religious teachers that teach a corrupt version of Christianity, a version that does not make any sense. So if, if you're a Muslim, uh, you cannot. You 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 are not offered another option uh, to consider uh, 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 the way they taught what we believe about Jesus being God. Uh, they uh, they think that it is two two separate gods. So uh, they think that we don't believe in one and only true God. Uh, for them, this does not make sense. You know that uh, Christians believe in three gods. Another thing that keeps them from considering other options is is a price. Uh, if you were uh, to show doubt about what you believe or reject it, uh, uh, you will be uh, you will be cast out from your family, and in many cases, your family may actually hurt, harm you physically uh, because you're bringing shame uh, to the family. Uh, 
so the, so uh, you you have that uh, uh, they they don't see the need for a savior because sin is not a big deal. Uh, you're not offered with an an alternative uh, because the version of Christianity they hear is from their Muslim religious teachers that teach them different Christianity uh, that we have in the Bible. And then there is a price. Uh, you grow up in a culture where if you read in, in the Quran and you read something that maybe you have a question mark, uh, uh, it is a lack of faith, you know. So if you're reading something and you think that mm, doesn't make sense, you, you once you realize you're doing that, you actually need to ask God for forgiveness because you're having doubt and lack of faith. So if this is how you you grow up, you know, it's different. It's very hard. Uh, to to have questions and explore other possibilities. And then if you start exploring them right away and it start, and started to make sense to you, right away you're thinking about, wait a minute, what does this mean to me? I'm afraid to be convinced because if it makes sense to me, the price is too steep, you know? So when someone does make this change, like when they when they do actually turn to faith in Christ, that's obviously a pretty big deal then because there are these these um, reasons that you just gave are being overcome. Um, so when you do see people coming to faith in Christ, even though these limitations are there, what is it that that you're seeing is kind of kind of drawing them into uh, into this relationship with Christ or believing in the gospel or believing in the Bible? Uh, there was a survey done with 700 uh, former Muslims who came followers uh, of Jesus. And the number one reason uh, they gave for doing so uh, was the love of God presented in the Bible and displayed to them in the life of Christians. That's powerful that they're, that what what it is that seems to affect them is when they recognize the love of God, um, the love of of Christ, um, and then that love is demonstrated to them through other believers. Have you seen that take place in in people? Yeah, we 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 had students from Iraq, from Turkey, from Egypt, from Kazakhstan uh, come 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 to Christ. Uh, while here uh, as an inter as international students uh, uh, yeah so uh, maybe and, and 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 by the way it's it's a great opportunity to reach them while here because here they don't have a lot of the pressures they have back in their home countries so they are more open while while here but in the same time if they come to Christ, they are the best missionaries to take the gospel back uh, to their home country. So I remember there was a student from, uh, uh, and by the way, most of the students we're working with are grad students, and they are the best students in their countries. This is wh why they make it to U.S. Uh, campuses. So there was a student from uh, from uh, from Turkey uh, 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 was involved in our Bible study group for like a couple of years. And uh, I would meet with him one on one uh, every week. So we're meeting twice. One was a Bible study group at our home, and during the week I meet with him one on one, and very smart, very open. So several times I asked him if he want to invite Jesus to his heart, and he would say no, which makes sense, you know, knowing the consequences, you know. But then he started to invite other Muslim students to the group. And during the discussion, he would be raising up questions that make them doubt what they believe. So several times I asked him, uh, we'll call him Mu. So several times, I, so one time I asked him, Mu, how, how, I understand that you're need, not ready to come to Christ, but how come you started to evangelize uh, other people? And his answer to me was, do you know what will happen to me if I become a Christian? Uh, I told him, yeah, you, you, you may lose your life. And it was obvious that fear was the one thing that keeping him from, uh, from coming uh, to Christ. But, you know, as Middle Eastern men, we don't say that, you know. Uh, but a few months later, he came uh, to Christ. Uh, the year following that, he was Skyping with three of his best friends. 
uh, back in Turkey. And by the end of this year, he led two of them uh, to Christ. Uh, so it was a, a great example of our vision, you know, that reaching to international students here and how, you know, they can take the gospel back uh, with them. That's what, what's so um, amazing about that story is the fear was there, which was preventing him from saying, I can't accept, but he was already believing and sharing it with others or raising the contradictions with others. So his heart had already been, it impacted his just, he just didn't want, you know, yeah. And that just, I think proves how God, uh, how God's word can, <clears throat> can work. If there are people who are, who are listening, um, who have engaged, uh, or know, uh, or maybe they're, maybe they themselves are trying to be a witness, uh, to, um, to someone who is holding to the, you know, to Islam, how would you, well, how would you encourage them, um, or, um, or just, uh, you know, give them, give them some, some insight, uh, based on, obviously you have many years of experience, uh, doing this, uh, what, what would you say to, to somebody who's maybe trying to be a gospel witness to, uh, to a Muslim? So as you know, God's desire is for all to come to the saving knowledge uh, of Christ. And this includes the Muslims. So we may, sometimes we may have a, a, a hard attitude toward people groups, but we need to start see them with God's eyes, that he loves them, that Jesus died for them, and he wants them to know him. Uh, uh, so uh, the main, so Muslims remain one of the least reached people group uh, in the world. Uh, for most of them back in their home countries, they maybe never met a Christian. Uh, they don't have access uh, to the Bible or being taught a wrong version of what we believe as a gospel is. Uh, we need to cross those barriers and present them the gospel in a way that makes sense uh, to them. Uh, so we need to take this the initiative and God is bringing many of them, especially in recent years, to our uh, front doors here in the US. Uh, so it's hard for us maybe to reach them over there and God is bringing them to our uh, doorsteps. Uh, we need to take the initiative uh, to reach out to them, befriend them, uh, show them God's love, pray for them, and take initiative uh, uh, to present the gospel to them. Uh, if you have a, mis a Muslim neighbor or international students, uh, ask them, how can I pray for you? Uh, uh, tell them something that you learned in your quiet time. Uh, take those early steps uh, to start spiritual conversations with them. Share your testimony uh, with them. Uh, it's a great opportunity that we have now. We're uh, we're very grateful for your partnership. Uh, 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 we're seeing more openness uh, to the gospel. We have uh, uh, maybe 27 students from Muslim nations involved uh, uh, in what we're doing every week, and we cannot do that without your partnership. So. Uh, we're very grateful for you being part and enabling us uh, to do what we're doing. So thank you, and uh, we love you all. Well, very thankful for the opportunity uh, to hear that testimony uh, from our brother, and from someone that our church is actually in, uh, uh, in partnership with in, uh, in gospel ministry. Um, I wanted to get right into uh, some teaching here uh, that I wanted to give to you in the few minutes that we have left together so that you can continue to take from what it is that you heard and, uh, and apply these things and also just continue to learn. As you've already heard, the word Islam means submission. And so it's a worldview and a religion of submission. Uh, a, a Muslim is basically someone who has chosen to submit to Allah, to the Quran, 
uh, and to the principles of Islam as shown in the Ummah, which is the community of Muslims uh, around the world. Islam is a major world religion. A quarter of the world's population identifies as a Muslim. So it's truly a world religion. Another fact that may be surprising to you is that the majority of Muslims are not Arabs. The largest population of Muslims can be found in Indonesia, Pakistan, India, and Bangladesh. So how did this major world religion, this worldview get, get started? Well, according to Muslim tradition, while in Mecca, a merchant named Muhammad started to have visions that he initially thought were demonic. He was convinced actually by one of his wives that it was a message from God. And then in AD 610, he claimed that the angel Gabriel visited him and commissioned him as a prophet of God. And then he spent several years transmitting that message orally into what we know as the Quran, the holy book of Islam. And that dictation of the Quran really continued for 23 years, right up until his death in AD 632. And then he spread his message to many, and Islam really grew from there into what it is today. We should really understand Islam as a comprehensive worldview, not just a religion. This entire series that we're doing is about understanding the impact of worldviews and ideas because worldviews, they impact every area of your life. And, and Salem Azam, who is the Secretary General of the Islamic Council of Europe, he wrote the following. He said, Islam spiritualizes the entire existence of man and produces a social movement to reconstruct human life in the light of principles revealed by God. Islam aims at changing life and producing a new man and a new society. You can see the worldview aspect to that. In Islam, you take it all or you take none of it. It's not like what we talked about last week with New Ageism. It's not a la carte. Islam actually teaches that, that, that Christianity and Judaism had the truth in the beginning. But over time, it was corrupted. And then Islam is now really the only uncorrupt way to please God. So before moving to some specific belief differences, which I want to give to you, I want to just say something categorically for you to understand. You've already heard it, but it's this. It's just the fact that Islam and Christianity are not at all compatible with each other when we look at biblical Christianity. This so-called compatibility of, of Christianity and Islam ha has led to something. It's, it's, a, it's a belief system. It's called Chrislam. And, and Chrislam is really an attempt to syncretize Christianity with Islam. And, and that idea, this Chrislam idea, really began um, in the early 80s, particularly in Nigeria. And the essential concept really is that Christianity and Islam are really compatible belief systems. And you can basically be Muslim and Christian at the same time. And so what Chrislam attempts to do is blur or erase the differences and the distinctions between biblical Christianity and Islam. And it should be revealing to all of us to know that Orthodox conservative Christians in terms of interpreting the Bible and Orthodox conservative Muslims in terms of interpreting the Quran completely reject this idea of compatibility. It really is the result of a postmodern pluralistic approach to worldviews, just joining them together. And so you should know that my goal today in what we're doing in all of this is not to blur those distinctions and those differences, but really what I'm trying to do is to help clarify these distinctions as biblical Christians. I want you to see that without a doubt, biblical Christianity is not at all compatible with the teachings of Islam or the other worldviews as we continue to look at what it is that we're talking about, these, this idea of worldviews. So let's start with the teachings about God. As we think about God, Allah is the Arabic word for God. It's actually not the name of God. 
Arabic Christians, and when I say Christians, I mean biblical Christians who actually speak Arabic, will use that word a lot to refer to God because it's the Arabic translation of that word for God. And as you heard, Muslims understand God to be the creator God, just as Christians do. Muslims understand God to be utterly transcendent, not at all like humans, so transcendent, in fact, that he's virtually unknowable, which again, you heard. You see, in Islam, you're not really seeking to know God. You're not seeking to be known by God because he's not at all a personal God. In Islam, you seek to please God. You obey him or you face his displeasure. But what did Jesus himself say in John 17? He said, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. You see, the God of the scriptures came to humanity to be known by humanity. It's very different. Islam also rejects a Trinitarian God, which you've already heard. One God in three distinct persons. The Quran says they do blaspheme who say God is one of three in a trinity for there is no God except one God. And so you can see this clear difference on a major doctrinal uh, subject. So on these differences alone, these worldviews cannot be reconciled. Second would be Revelation, the Bible. Islam teaches that God communicated his will to humans primarily through prophets, 25 of whom are named in the Quran. Islam teaches that the, that the Christian Bible has, again, been corrupted over time and that the uncorrupted Bible, if you could actually find that version, they believe that it actually taught Islam. Islam teaches that, that God's revelation to Muhammad is the only authoritative and uncorrupted revelation of God to humanity. The Quran actually teaches that Islam supersedes Christianity and that Islam is the fulfillment of Christianity, which you heard our brother say when, when, he, was, when he was talking about how, how they viewed the beginning of the writings and then the end, how it kind of changed over time. But we see in Galatians 1.8 that Paul wrote, but even if we or an angel from heaven which is interesting, angel from heaven applies very specifically here, should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. The biblical, this biblical text right here alone rejects the entire origin of the Islamic belief system. And then third is Jesus, which of course for biblical Christianity, that's, that's very important, the person of Jesus. Islam does acknowledge the virgin birth. And actually the miraculous works. And even the fact that he was sinless. But they deny his claim to be God himself in the flesh. The Quran actually teaches the following about Jesus. They say that Jesus declared that he was only human while in the cradle. That he actually said that. He denied his own divinity. That he prophesied of the coming of, Mu- of Muhammad. And these things are not, are not things that... That, that actually Jesus said or did, but they are in, in the Quran. These alone make the compatibility of Christianity and Islam impossible. Islam denies his death as an atoning sacrifice for sin on the cross, and it denies his bodily resurrection. In the Quran, it says, They that said, We killed Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the apostle of God, they killed him not, nor crucified him. This is saying that Jesus did not die, but that God just brought him to heaven. No atoning death, no redemption, no victorious resurrection. Hamouda Abdullahi, the late Syracuse University sociology professor, he said, the Muslim cannot entertain the dramatic story of Jesus' death upon the cross just to do away with all human sins once and for all. See, not only is the teaching of Jesus different in Islam, but Muslims believe that that Islam has the superior view of, of Jesus Christ. And what we see here is that Islam does not fulfill the Christian faith. It really attempts to replace it. 1 Corinthians 1.18, Paul wrote, For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. And then a couple verses later, down in verse 23, it says, But we preach Christ crucified. 
Amen? Like we preach Christ crucified. We preach a crucified Christ. Without that, it, we, we're no longer talking about Christianity. And then Paul literally says a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. And so we can't deny his death and somehow have a compatible uh, understanding of these views. Fourth is salvation. Becoming a Muslim does not require redemption or being made new like 2 Corinthians 5.17 teaches. If anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Again, as you heard, salvation in Islam is not really about what's in your heart. It's about your actions because change comes from the outside in, not the inside out. And that's very much unlike what Jesus himself said in Mark 7. When he said, hear me, all of you, and understand there's nothing outside of a person that by going into him can defile him, but the things that come out of a person are what defile him. Our hearts need to be changed from the inside out. And that's specifically what biblical Christianity does. The Quran teaches that each person's good deeds will be weighed to determine who goes to paradise and who goes to hell. In Islam, in the end, it's about doing enough good for Allah and making sure that the good scales outweigh the bad, as you can see by that, by that uh, text in the Quran. Another quote from Abdullahi, he said, each person must bear his or her own burden and be responsible for his or her own actions because no one can expiate for another's sin. But it's very different than what we see in scripture where Acts 4.12, when Peter was preaching, he said, there's salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. There's no salvation found anywhere else. And then there's humanity, the idea of humanity, which is another distinct difference. In Islam, if you read the story or understand the story of Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden tree. They were expelled from paradise and cast down to earth. But their understanding is not that the earth is cursed. Humanity is not cursed. Humans must just live on this earth as a testing ground. And they can, people are able to then earn their way back to paradise by doing the will of Allah. You see, in Islam, humans aren't born into sin. Sin gets into them from the corruption of the world and from the corruption of others who have not yet submitted to Allah, which is why it's so important for others to submit to him to remove that corruption. But again, that's not at all what the Bible teaches. Romans 5.12, therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, I know I quoted this before, but it's okay if you memorize it. So death spread to all men because all sinned. The, the biblical story of the gospel is so clear. And so the Muslim is living according to the five pillars in an attempt to get back to paradise, hoping to do enough good to outweigh the bad. But the Christian life is about denying self and allowing the spirit of God to transform us into the likeness of Christ from the inside out. Christianity and the Bible, it reveals a personal God, a God that can be known, a God that created you and knows everything about you. Biblical Christianity and Islam are not at all compatible. And most Muslim scholars would agree with that. Christians should understand Islam really as an attempt to replace the gospel of Christ with the good works message of Muhammad. Islam changes the stories of the Bible, the characters of the Bible. It declares Jesus to be a prophet and not God. Muhammad to be the final prophet, the Quran to be the final revelation. It denies the atonement and the resurrection of Christ as the only means of salvation. So again, we need to be reminded of what the scripture says. Colossians 2.8, see to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world and not according to Christ. See, biblical Christianity is according 
to Christ. Christianity, right? But that word is being used in so many different ways that Christ is being taken out of Christianity or the gospel of Christ. And we cannot allow that to happen. We must remain faithful to what the scripture teaches. And as we continue to go through this, and I hope you see this uh, in my tone, I am not at all trying to bring these things before you as we talk about them, these other worldviews, in, in an attempt uh, to somehow make fun of them or, 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 th- or even those who, who believe these things, but to help us understand the distinctions. And then as gospel witnesses, let's go out and be the witnesses God has called us to be about the gospel of Jesus Christ and to love other people, as you heard, even from our brother. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord God, we thank you for your truth. We thank you for our brother who shared so uh, faithfully. Thank you for the work he's doing. Thank you, Lord, for the true gospel of Jesus Christ, that it is so distinct. As we continue to go through this, we're just going to see how there's nothing else like it. And there's a reason for that, because there's no one like Jesus. And we worship the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Yes, there is only one God revealed to humanity Revealed in, the, in three distinct persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. And there's only one way to be made right with God, and that is through the redemptive work of Jesus Christ the Son. We believe that, we accept that, and help us now, Lord, to be the witnesses you've called us to be to the world around us. To love other people, to realize that some are believing things, and maybe, as our brother shared, maybe they've just never heard the real gospel Give us these opportunities to share that in Jesus' holy name, we pray. Amen. Amen. So we'll conclude our service by glorifying Jesus, the Savior of the world. Let's all stand together and lift his name up. Him for being the salvation for our sins that we needed.
Let's pray together. Lord God, we give you all the praise and the glory that is due to you. Jesus, there is no name like yours. Yours is the name above all others. And uh, we give you the praise and the glory uh, that you are worthy of. We thank you for revealing yourself and your truth to us. Bless us now as we go into this world where there are so many different uh, worldviews and thoughts around us and help us to be the witnesses of truth, the witnesses of the gospel, the witnesses of the light that you have called us to be in and through the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen and God bless you. Mm -hmm.